So, a couple questions. Why in the Hisui region with this brand new legendary Pokemon on Amorous did they choose a legendary from a trio that is from the Unova region? Nothing to do with Sinnoh. Why hasn't this Pokemon appeared anywhere else across the Pokemon world? And why am I wearing sunglasses? You'll get answers to a couple of those things in videos, but I'm not promising all of them. Hey Pokemon Masters, Bucky Potobi here, and okay, obviously the true reason that Enamorous didn't appear in any of the other Pokemon games that feature the other forces of nature is because it didn't exist, exist yet. Heck, when Landorus, Tornadoes, and Thunderous first appeared, the fairy type didn't even exist, so of course they couldn't have Enamorous in the game. It didn't exist till last year. But that's like saying, why is Ash Ketchum still 10, and answering, because he's a cartoon. Answers like that, put me out of a job. So today we're gonna put our theory caps on and jump into the real reason, the in-law reason as to why Enamorous isn't in the rest of Pokemon. So what do we know about Enamorous? Well, Enamorous completes a quartet that was previously a trio, the forces of nature. Pokemon that have the most rubbish base form, but their theory and forms that they all have are really, really cool. Personally, a huge fan of the Flying Tiger, and I know they upset a lot of competitive players, but I'm gonna say it, Landorus theory and form, it's like one of the coolest Pokemon of all time. This trio was previously led by Landorus in the original games that they were released in, Pokemon Black and White in the Unova region. Tornadus and Thunderous were version exclusive, and by catching them both and trading them over to one copy, you could then access Landorus, a Pokemon that was even separate from them in the Pokedex. This just showed that it was different, it was special, it was a leader. In order to access it, you had to go to the Abundant Shrine, a shrine that looks suspiciously like the one in Celestic Town, we're gonna get to that. You could also access these three Pokemon through the Dream Radar game in Dream Balls uh, that was attached to Pokemon Black and White 2. This DS download title is actually a lot of fun. I've played it multiple times, download it before the eShop wipes it forever. You can still get your theory and forms there, and actually the Pokemon arrive in Dream Balls, and hey, Dream Balls, Dream Mist, and Namorous, ooh, maybe there's some theory potential there. They're pink, that's a theory potential. There's really not that much there, but there is theory potential in the fact that that shrine, the Abundant Shrine, looks just like the shrine that appears in Celestic Town. And I have to thank my Twitter community here. I cannot find the DM. Someone sent this to me, and I just wanna say thank you to you for sending this my way, because yeah, you're right. The shrines look identical. And this is a big deal because at first it seems like Hisui and the Yonova region are so far removed from each other, but Celestic Town is actually a very important place when related to Hisui, as it is the area of Sinnoh that was most likely once the Ancient Retreat, where we first meet Enamorous. There, after the events of the main game, we can meet the ancestor of Cynthia. She's a mysterious character who lives out in the Ancient Retreat. She is of the ancient Sinnoh people who existed long before the Hisui region. Her blood stretches back the same as Volo's, and she's been in the Ancient Retreat for quite a while, obligated to bring the lore of her people down through the generations and pass on words of wisdom. She even knows the words of the old verses, one of which directly gives reference to Enamorous, a Pokemon that has been hanging about with her for quite some time. But as you go out into the field to catch Landorus, Tornadus, and Thunderous, eventually she'll give you access to this new Pokemon, Enamorous. She'll ask you to maximize its Pokemon entries and learn everything there is to learn about it and sure enough you do and you return to Miss Kogita and she says thank you do you know what Enamorous has been hanging out with me for some while but now it'll travel with you for a bit implying that of course you can't expect to live forever and this is a legendary Pokemon a force of nature so of course one day we'll be free again this line of dialogue is actually really insightful when it comes to legendary Pokemon. I think we've always wondered, hang on, how can a kid catch a legendary Pokemon in its Pokeball? You know, God of Time in my Pokeball. Of course, when the trainer passes away, I guess the idea is Dialga is released back into the wild. What's really funny about this, in, specifically in relation to Dialga and Palkia, is the player character you're playing as in Legends Arceus is from the future. You already caught a Dialga in the future, probably the same Dialga. So in the in, from the perspective of Legends Arceus, you catch Dialga, Dialga has no idea who you are. And then in the future, after you've died, Dialga's gonna recognize you and be like, hey buddy, you, you, I thought you had died. You're, wait, you're a bit shorter than I remember, because they're chibi. <laughs> 
No, no, cut that. The Dialga and the Palkia are actually seeing the younger versions of their old trainers who have died. That's like super traumatic. Anyway, back to Enamorous. So Kogita kind of expects that Enamorous will continue to pass down the hands of other trainers, maybe be free for a bit. And it is explained that, you know, yeah, eventually that will happen. And that's presumably the case for the other forces of nature as well. Landorus, Tornadorus, Thunderous. Why am I saying them weird? Tornadorus, Tornadorus, Tornadus. They will all one day be free again. And sure enough, we find them in the modern day Unova region. All of them are there apart from Enamorous. So where is she? What happened? Is she still sitting in a Pokeball on a shelf somewhere, just not released in time? Maybe, I suppose, I suppose that's possible. But there is one other big tie to the Unova region in Hisui, and here we have to put another theory cap on because it ties back to another theory that I think has generally been accepted. The idea that the original hero who worked with the original Sinnoh people in the past of Hisui was older. We see this painting appear in the Diamond and Pearl clan's uh, tents, and we see the Pokeballs around his neck. This was a human who had Pokeballs before Pokeballs should exist. He was able to wield 10 Pokemon, which is a real feat for olden day trainers, with only Volo being able to, uh, to handle six, or I guess seven, and you, the player character, being naturally gifted because you could catch three at the beginning of the game. This trainer shouldn't exist in this time zone. Unless they, like you, had been sent back in time via a space-time distortion, which we know space-time distortions did happen before the time of Legends Arceus, that's why they have a name for it, and that that trainer was older. And it makes sense, they're definitely grabbing trainers from the Unova region, because Ingo, Ingo's also from the future. So Alder, with the many Pokeballs around his neck and at his waist, Alder got sent back in time. Is it possible that Alder had Enamorous with him? Which would make Enamorous a bootstrap paradox, being sent back in time and then being gifted down to Kogita's bloodline and then to Kogita and then to you, the player character, and eventually to Alder, and then Alder would go back in time and I guess Enamorous never really exists? Or always exists? It's fun to think about, but in order to make that claim, I'd need some evidence which I searched far and wide and I don't have it. And that was where I was going to leave this theory. It's where I was going to leave the video. But then I looked a little bit closer and I found something that I think you'll love. Love. It's all about love. Enamorous is the love Pokemon. It's about ena being enamored. Look at all those love hearts on it. In the Pokemon Black and White anime, Alda, the champion of the Unova region, is in love. He has a crush on Cynthia, the champion of Sinnoh. The champion who is the descendant of Kogita, and he asks her out on a date and gets rejected a couple of times. It's very sweet, it's very fun. Well, a cup of coffee wouldn't hurt. Persistence will only get you nowhere. But I have reason to believe that maybe something worked out between those two, because in the Unova region, in Pokemon Black and White and Black and White 2, Cynthia has her house in Undella Town, and she's in her house, her resort, where she battles you, but her team isn't 100% the same as her team from the Sinnoh days. She, like older, rocks a braviary. Interesting, it's just interesting. Here we go, we've got another connection between Sinnoh and the Unova region and Cynthia and Alda and Kogita and the ancient hero and Enamorous. This story is all beginning to tie together. And I wonder if the excuse they'll give for how Enamorous can appear in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet and in future Pokemon games beyond that, if the reason that they'll give is that the Pokemon always existed, it's just that this legendary Pokemon has been in the care of another trainer, a descendant of the Kogita bloodline, perhaps even gifted back to that bloodline via Alder, the champion of Unova, as a gift to show his uh, Enamorous his love, his interest in Cynthia. But it is interesting to note that there are connections here between Cynthia and Enamorous. Enamorous's Pokedex entry mentions how it hates the cold, it heralds the beginning of spring, and seasons are important to the world of Pokemon Black and White and Black and White 2, which were the only games to feature the seasonal mechanic. And Cynthia, she's only battleable in spring and summer. She won't battle you in the winter. Additionally, when she's at her villa, the people that shall have visited her are the female gym members and elite four members of the region. And Enamorous is the only female only member of the forces of nature group. And that, combined with all the previous things I've mentioned, is just one too many coincidences for me. Ultimately, we have three options here. Number one, Enamorous has been sat in a Pokeball for years on a shelf somewhere, gathering dust. And in the time of Scarlet and Violet or beyond, someone will discover this Pokeball, and that's how they'll reintroduce it into the series. 
Option number two, Anamorous is stuck in a really cool time loop. If we buy the idea that Alda is in fact the hero of olden days, then maybe Alda has Anamorous in modern day and ultimately will end up going back to the past, handing Anamorous down through time and through history to Kogita and eventually back on to himself where he'll take it back to the future, back, back in time. Or number three, my favorite one, and this video's main theory. Anamorous belongs to the ancient hero who looks like the modern day champion of Unova, passes it down the bloodline to Kogita. Kogita will one day pass Anamorous down to you, and you will pass it on to other future Pokemon trainers. Maybe it'll get released for a little bit, and the place where Kogita lives, the ancient retreat, will one day become Celestic Town, featuring a shrine to remind us that there is a connection between there and the the abundant shrine of Unova where the forces of nature will live in modern day. And Dynamorous keeps on going down the line and eventually winds up with Alda. And as a sign of love, in flirtiness with Cynthia, Alda gives her Enamorous, as well as possibly her bra his Braviary for a time. Because, like, why she got Braviary? That's Alda's Pokemon! And a Pokemon very important to the Hisui region. Anyway, he passes down Enamorous to show that he likes her, and, uh, you know, she has it for a bit. But she'll only battle you in the summer and the spring. The rest of the time, she takes Enamorous back to the Sinnoh region. As for why it doesn't appear with the forces of nature in the other Pokemon games, Hooper portals, it's not actually there anyway, so Hooper just didn't teleport it. Ultra wormholes, so other dimensions, we just don't go to the dimension where Enamorous is. Max Raid Lair, we're not even sure if it's canon, it's legendary Pokemon traveling from across the world. But how can Enamorous do that if it's stuck in the past or in a Pokeball somewhere? I'm sure there's a reason. Oh yeah, the reason is it's a video game and didn't exist yet. But hey, I like to think about these kind of things. I like making theories, and if you like Pokemon theories, then um, I've got a bunch more for you right here. I've been doing loads on Legends Arceus and I've got more to come. Now, if you watch this far into the video, you are my secret audience. So say hi in the comments. Did you like this theory? Would you too speculative for you? I don't know. I think I have fun even if they are ridiculously speculative. And if you want to know about my spectacles, then uh, that will have to wait for a future theory. And of course, so hi, Pokemon Masters. This is Ash Ketchum. You just watched a video by Bird Keeper Toby. That makes you a Pokemon master! A huge thank you as always to those of you who are supporting me on Patreon, including the big patrons of this month, Jed Rubin, Michael Hornchew, and Lucas Gates. Thank you guys.